Hello friends, welcome you in Azure in Competitive Mathematics. In this video, we will learn some basic concepts required for the calculus. In this video, we see sets and operations of the set, functions, two-dimensional coordinate system, complex numbers, and polynomial equations and their solutions. We know that calculus is divided into two broad areas, one differential calculus and second integral calculus. Differential calculus is the study of change and integral calculus is about adding up the parts. Now some useful books and websites. First book is Essential Calculus by James Stewart. Second Calculus by Anton Bivens and Davis, it is by Willey publication. The website is https brilliant.org oblique courses oblique calculus underscore done right. And these are the websites which are useful for the study of calculus. Now sets and operations on them. The definition of the set. The well-defined collection of objects is called as a set. That means the objects must be well-defined. Now some examples. The set of natural numbers, it is denoted by n. The set of integers, it is denoted by capital Z. The set of rational numbers, it is denoted by Q. The set of real numbers, it is denoted by capital R. An object that belong to the set is called as element or member of that set. Normally, we use the capital letters for denoting sets A, B, C, etc. And the lowercase letters small a, small b, small c, x, y, etc. to denote the elements of the set. For example, if the set of natural number is considered then all natural numbers are elements of the set n that is 1, 2, 3 and so on these are the elements of the set n. Symbolically we write the element A is an element of the set capital A as A belongs to A and can be read as A belongs to A. If A is not an element of A that is if A does not belong to the set A then we write this fact as the symbol A doesn't belong to A. If A is a set of prime numbers, then phiu belongs to A as phiu is a prime number and 9 does not belong to A as 9 is not a prime number. A prime number is a natural number other than 1 whose only factors are 1 and itself. Now next definition. A set which has no elements is called as empty set. It is also called as void set, null set. The empty set is denoted by letter phi or empty bracket, curly brackets. The set which has at least one element is called as non-empty set. And any non-empty set can be described by two ways. One by listing method and second by property method. Now let us see listing method. In this method, we list all the members of the set within curly brackets. For instance, the set of natural numbers that are factors of 10 is 1, 2, 5 and 10 as all these are factors of 10. If the set has too many elements, we list some of the elements of the set. For example, set of natural numbers is described as capital N equal to set 1, 2, 3 and so on. In this way, we can write first some elements in the set and then write dashes. The set of all even numbers strictly lying between 10 and 100 is 12. 14, 16, 18, so on 
up to 98. While writing this type of set, we write first three letters, first three numbers, first three elements and write the last element of the set. This method of presenting the set is called as listing method. It is also called as tabular method or roster method. Second method, property method. In this method, the method in this method of describing the set, we describe its element by property common to all of them. For example, consider the set S of the students in IGNO. Here, the property common to all of them is that each member is the set of student in IGNO. So, we can write this as S equal to S such that where S is a student in IGNO. Now consider the set capital T of all natural numbers which are multiples of 5. This set T can be written in the form T equal to set of all x in n and x is a multiple of 5. This set states that T is the set of all x such that x is a natural number and x is a multiple of 5. We can also write this in slightly shorter form as t equal to x in n such that e is a multiple of 5. This method of describing the set is called as a property method. It is also called as set builder method. Next definition. Two sets S and T are equal and it is written by S equal to T. If and only every element of S is an element of T and every element of T is an element of S. If A equal to 2, 1, 3 and B equal to 1, 2, 3, then both the state have same elements and hence A equal to B. By listing the elements in the set, we do not gain anything by right repeating them. Therefore, the convention is that we do not repeat the element in the set. That means, if some elements occur twice, thrice, then we will write it at only one time. Changing the order in which the elements are listed in the set does not alter the set. There can be several properties that define the same set. Now we define a non-empty set with finitely many elements is called a finite set. And the set which is not finite is called an infinite set. The number of elements in the set, finite set A, is called the cardinality of the set A and it is denoted by magnitude of A or card A. The set with only one element is called a single element. By convention, we treat the empty set as a finite set with cardinality 0 as the empty set does not have any element. A set A is a subset of set B. A set A is a subset of set B if every element of A belongs to B and we denote this fact by A is a subset of equal to B. In this situation, we also say that A is a contained in B or B contains A. We can denote B contains A by B is a superset of A. Here, B is a called as superset of A and A is a called as subset of B. If A is a subset of B and there exists Y in B such that Y does not belong to A, then we say that A is a proper subset of B and we denote it by A proper subset of B. This is the notation for proper subset. That means for A to be the sub proper subset of B, there must exist at least one element in B which is not in A and all elements of A are in B. If x and y are two sets such that x has an element x which does not belong to set y, then we say that x is not contained in y. And we note this fact by x is not subset of y. That means x and y are two sets such that there is at least one element in x which does not belong to the set y. Then we shall say that x is not subset of y. First example, 
कंसिडर द सेट कैपिटल ए इक्वल टू वन टू थ्री इज ए सबसेट ऑफ ए और इज ए नॉट सबसेट ऑफ ए गिव रीजन सिंस एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ ए इज अटनली इन ए वी कैन से दैट ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ ए ऑल्सो देर कैन नॉट बी एनी एलिमेंट ऑफ ए दैट इज नॉट इन ए देर फोर ए कैन नॉट बी प्रॉपर सबसेट ऑफ ए इट सेल्फ रिमार्क फॉर एनी सेट ए वी कैन शो दैट ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ इक्वल टू ए दस एनी सबसेट एनी सेट इज अ सबसेट ऑफ इट सेल्फ एनी सेट इज अ सबसेट ऑफ इट सेल्फ एंड ऑल्सो नो सेट इज अ प्रॉपर सबसेट ऑफ इट सेल्फ कीप इन माइंड दैट एम टी सेट फाइव इज अ सबसेट ऑफ एवरी सेट एंड टू सेट्स ए एंड बी आर सेट टू बी इक्वल इफ ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ बी एंड बी इज अ सबसेट ऑफ ए इफ दिस केस हैपन्स एवरी एलिमेंट्स ऑफ ए आर एलिमेंट्स ऑफ बी एंड एवरी एलिमेंट्स ऑफ बी आर एलिमेंट्स ऑफ ए देन ए एंड बी आर सेट टू बी इक्वल फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए इक्वल टू सेट ऑफ इवन नेचुरल नंबर्स लेस दैन टेन एंड बी इज अ सेट ऑफ टू फोर सिक्स एट देन एवरी मेंबर ऑफ ए इज अ मेंबर ऑफ बी एंड एवरी मेंबर ऑफ बी इज अ एलिमेंट ऑफ ए इज अ मेंबर ऑफ ए दैट इज ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ बी एंड बी इज अ सबसेट ऑफ ए देर फोर बाय अवर डेफिनेशन वी कैन से दैट ए इक्वल टू बी नाउ वेन डायग्राम इट इज ऑफन इजियल टू अंडरस्टैंड द सिचुएशन इफ वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट इट पिक्टोरियली to ease our understanding of many situations involving set and their relationship we presented them by simple diagram called as venn diagram and english logician john venn invented these diagrams so these are named as venn diagram to be able to draw a venn diagram we should need to know what is the universal set consider the situation involving two or more sets of for example the set d of female film directors and the set s of female scientist then we first look for the convenient super superset of all these sets under discussion for example here we can say we can take this to be the set of all women we call this a superset a universal set and denote it by u universal set is a set which is a superset of all the given sets this is because u contains d as well as s we could also take u to be the set of all humans which would be the larger superset keep in mind that superset u is a set which contains all the subset all the sets under consideration that means all the sets under consideration are subsets of this larger set which is called as universal set now operations on the set first complementation let a and b are two sets then complement of a in b is denoted by b minus a it can be also read as b complement a and it is the set of all elements in b which are not elements of a that is set of all elements x in b such that x doesn't belongs to a and this is denoted by b complement a similarly a complement b can be denoted by this by the set of all elements x in a set of all elements x in a which are not in b for example if a equal to set 1 2 3 4 b equal to set 2 4 5 5 then a complement b is 1 3 as the 1 3 are in a and are not in b and b complement a is 5 as there is only one element 5 which are in b which is in b and which is not in a other elements 2 and 4 are in b as well as in a also in a special case when b is a universal set u then b minus a or b complement a is a u complement a this set is called as complement of set a and it is denoted by a c or c a second operation intersection let a and b be the two subsets of universal set u then the intersection of a and b will be the set of all elements 
of u that are common to both a and b that means set of all ms which are in both the sets a and b it is denoted by a intersection b thus a intersection b is a set of all x in u such that x belongs to a and x belongs to b for example if a equal to 1 3 phi u 7 b equal to set phi u 10 then a intersection b is equal to singleton set phi u because phi u is the only element in both the set let a and b be the two sets such that a intersection b equal to phi then a and b are called as mutually disjoint sets or only disjoint set note that a and a complement are disjoint sets third union let a and b be the two sets in a universal set u the set of all those elements of u which belongs to either a or to b or to both a and b is called as union of set a and b this is symbolically written as a union b and thus a union b is a set of all elements x in u such that x belongs to a or x belongs to b or x belongs to a intersection b for example if u equal to set 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and a is a set 1 3 4 phi u b is a set 3 phi u 6 then a union b is 1 3 4 phi u 6 note that a union b contains all the elements of a as well as elements of b so a is always subset of a union b and b is also subset of a union b we define order pair let a and b be the two sets the order pair ab enclosed in a bracket in which the first element is from set a and the second element is from set b is a called as order pair we define cartesian product the cartesian product a cross b of the sets a and b is the set of all order pairs ab where a belongs to set a and b belongs to set b that is a cross b is a set of all order pairs ab such that a belongs to a b belongs to b note that two order pairs ab and cd are said to be equal or same if a is equal to c and b equal to d for example if a equal to set 1 2 3 b equal to set 4 6 then a cross b equal to set of all order pairs 1 4 1 6 2 4 2 4 2 6 3 4 3 6 3 and b cross a equal to set of all order pairs 4142436162636 note that order pair 14 belongs to a cross b but 14 does not belongs to b cross a from this we can conclude that a cross b is not equal to b cross a the number of elements of in set a is called as cardinality of a and it is denoted by magnitude of a if cardinality of a is a n cardinality of b is a m then the cardinality of a cross b is equal to n m if a and b are two non empty sets and either one of them is a infinite then a cross b is also infinite laws on operation first distributive law we shall state the distributive law let a b and c be the three subsets of the universal set u then a intersection b union c is equal to a intersection b union a intersection c that means intersection distributes over union also a union b intersection c is equal to a union b intersection a union c that means union distributes over intersection these are the two distributive laws we shall prove these laws we know that two sets are equal if and only if each is a subset of the other so we will show that a intersection b union c is a subset of a intersection b 
union A intersection C and A intersection B union A intersection C is a subset of A intersection B union C for proving first identity that is intersection distributes over union for proving one we shall take an element x in A intersection B union C x belongs to A intersection B union C this implies x belongs to A and x belongs to B union C this implies that x belongs to A and x belongs to B or x belongs to C equal to x belongs to A and x belongs to B or x belongs to A and x belongs to C this implies that x belongs to A intersection B or x belongs to A intersection C this implies that x belongs to A intersection B union A intersection C so we have proved the first inclusion one to prove second let x belongs to A intersection B union A intersection C this implies that x belongs to A intersection B or x belongs to A intersection C this implies that x belongs to A and x belongs to B or x belongs to A and x belongs to C from this we can conclude that x belongs to A and x belongs to B or x belongs to C this implies that x belongs to A and x belongs to B union C this shows that x belongs to A intersection B union C so we have proved second and hence statement one of the theorem similarly we can prove second statement union distributes over intersection de morgan's laws for any two sets a and b in the universal set u a intersection b complement is equal to a complement union b complement and intersection of a union b is equal to a in complement intersection b complement we shall prove this we shall prove first identity to prove first identity a intersection complement of a intersection b is equal to a complement union b complement we shall take x belongs to a intersection b complement so x belongs to complement of a intersection b that means x belongs to u minus a intersection b that means x does not belongs to a intersection b that is x does not belong to both the sets a and b this happens if and only x does not belongs to a or x does not belongs to b because x belongs to a and x belongs to b implies x belongs to a intersection b therefore x does not belongs to a or x does not belongs to a b this happens if and only x belongs to a complement or x belongs to b complement that means x belongs to a complement union b complement so we have proved complement of a intersection b is a complement union b complement similarly we can prove second complement of a union b is equal to a complement intersection b complement now we define function a relation r on set s is a particular kind of relationship between the elements of s if a belong to s is related by b belong to s by means of this relation we write a is related to b or order pair ab belongs to r a relation r on a set s is a subset of s cross s for example if r is a relation is greater than q r is a relation is greater than q then 3 is related to 2 or order pair 3 2 belongs to r as 3 is greater than 2 a relation r defined on the set s is a set to be a reflexive if a is related to a for all a in s that means order pair a a belongs to r for all a belongs to s the relation is said to be symmetric if a related to b and b related to a for all ab belong to s that is if 
A B belongs to R, then B A also belongs to R, and the relation is said to be symmetric if A related to B and B related to C implies A related to C for all A B C belong to R. Yes, that is, if order pair A B belongs to R and order pair B C belongs to R, then order pair A C also belongs to R. A relation R on a set S is called as equivalence relation. If R is a reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Take an example. Consider the relation A related to B. If and only if A equal to B on R. Check whether R is equivalence relation. We know that equivalence relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. We shall check reflexivity. The relation is reflexive since A equal to A for all A in R. As every element is equal to itself, relation is a symmetric because a equal to b implies b equal to a. A equal to b implies b equal to a. It is transitive as a equal to b and b equal to c. These both implies a equal to c. Hence, the relation is an equivalence relation. Let x and y be the two sets. The relation. From x to y is a subset of x cross y. For example, H be the set of human beings. W sets subset of H be the set of all women drivers in India, and Y be the set of all driving license valid in India. Then R equal to set of all order pair W Y such that W belongs to W, Y belongs to Y is a relation from H to Y. Note that. R is equal to W cross Y is a subset of H cross Y, and a function f from non-empty set A to non-empty set B is a relation from A to B, which associates with every element of A, one and only one element of B. Function is a relation from non-empty set A to non-empty set B, such that every element of A is associated with one and one only element of B. This can be written as f from A to B. If f associates with A belongs to A, then the element B belongs to B. We can write it as f A equal to B, and B is a called as value of the function f at A, or image of A under the function f. A is a called domain of f, and B is a called codomain of f. The set f A can be written as Yep, a set of all f of a such that a belongs to a, and it is the range set of f. Range set of f is a set of all images. And the range set of f is a subset of codomain of f, and hence f a is always subset of b. Hence, range set is always subset of b. Note that if a function f from a to b, then for each element of a We associate some element of B. For each element of A, we associate only one element of B. So, if A belongs to A and F A equal to B one, as well as F A equal to B two, then B one must be equal to B two. That is, if A order pair A B one and order pair A B two are elements of the function F, then B one must be equal to B two. Two or more elements of A can be associated with the same element of B. That is, there can be A1, A2 in A, with A1 not equal to A2, and A1B is equal to order pair A2B. Function may be called as map, mapping, transformation, or operator. Consider an example. Let A equal to set one, two, three, and B equal to set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Define f from a to b by f of one equal to one, f of two equal to four, f of three equal to nine. Then f is a function with domain a, codomain b, and range set one, four, nine. When a relation from a to b does not satisfy the requirements for being a function, then we can say that this is a not well defined function. For example, a is one, two, three up to ten. And B is a set one five seven, 
and f from a to b with f of 1 equal to 1, f of 1 equal to 5. That is, 1 has a 2 images, 1 element in a has a 2 images. Then, it is not a well-defined function. Two functions f and g are said to be equal if domain of f is also domain of g and f of x equal to g of x for of x in domain of f, which implies that range of f must be equal to range of g. So, for example, the function f from r to r and f of x equal to x minus 1 and g from r to r, g of 0 equal to 7, g of 0 equal to 7 and g of x equal to x minus 1 for all x not equal to 0, x belongs to r, are not equal since f of 0 is not equal to g of 0 as f of 0 is equal to minus 1 and g of 0 equal to 7 defined. They are not equal and hence the two functions are not equal. A function f from a to b is called as 1 to 1 if f relates different element of a to different element of b. That means if a1 a2 belongs to capital A and a1 not equal to a then f of a1 is not equal to f of a2. That means in 1 1 function or in injective function different elements in the set have different images. A function f from a to b is a called as onto function or a surjective function if the range of f is the same as its codomain of b. That means f is onto if range set of a is equal to set b. This means that for any element b in b, there is at least one element a in a such that f a equal to b. If f is surjective, it is also called as surjection. If a function f from a to b is both 1 1 and on 2, then it is called as bijective function or a bijection. Now we define composition of the functions. Let f from a to b, g from c to d be two functions such that a range set of f is subset of c. Then composition of g and f is the function defined as g composition f from a to b such that g composition f of a equal to g of f of a. Example, if f of x equal to 5x, g of x equal to x plus 5, then g composition f solution, g composition f of x equal to g of f of x, that is g of 5x. g of 5x is equal to 5x plus 5. Let f from a to b a b1 given function. If there exists a function g from b to a such that f composition g is an identity function on b and g composition f is an identity function on a, then g is a called as inverse of f and we write it as g equal to f inverse. Key to find the inverse of the given function is to get f inverse, try to get back x from fx. Example, find the inverse of f from r to r defined by fx equal to 3x plus 5. To get back x from 3x plus 5, first we subtract 5 and then divide by 3. So, g from r to r is defined as gr equal to r minus 5 by 3, gr equal to r minus 5 by 3 and then replace r by x. Therefore, the inverse of function fx is gx equal to x minus 5 by 3. The binary operation on a non-empty set S is a function from S cross S to S. A binary function star on the set S is said to be close on subset T of S. If T1 star t2 belongs to t for all t1 t2 belongs to t the operation is closed if the binary operation t1 star t2 is in the set t and it is a commutative if a star b equal to b star a for all a b belongs to s and it is associative 
if a star b star c equal to a star b star c for all a b c belong to s now two dimensional coordinate system coordinate of the point p r x y so draw the horizontal line called as x axis draw the vertical line called as y axis these two lines divide the whole plane of paper into four parts which are called as quadrant they are named as first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant the intersection of the two lines is called as origin it is denoted by o let pxy be the point x represents on the x axis horizontal distance on x axis called as x coordinate and it is also called as abscissa of the point p the number y represents the vertical distance of p on y axis it is called as y coordinate or ordinate of p thus the coordinate of the point p r x y represents of a point in the plane is called two dimensional cartesian coordinate system the points for which both the coordinates are positive lie in first quadrant the points for which both the coordinates are negative lies in third quadrant the points for which x coordinate is negative and y coordinate is positive lies in second quadrant and the points for which x coordinate is positive and y coordinate is negative lies in fourth quadrant the points on the axis do not lie in any coordinate yeah, that means if the point lie on x axis or point lie on x y axis then that point does not lie in any of the quadrant equation of line equation of x axis is y equal to 0 and equation of y axis is x equal to 0 equation of a line parallel to x axis is y equal to b where 0 b is a point of intersection with y axis and the equation of a line parallel to y axis is x equal to a where a 0 is a point of intersection with x axis if the line is not parallel to either of the axis then it make an angle alpha with positive direction of x axis and hence tan alpha is a called as a slope of the line equation of a line not parallel to any axis and having y intercept c is y equal to mx plus c where m is a slope of the line that is m equal to tan alpha this form is called a slope intercept form of the line now second form slope point form equation of a line having slope m and passing through the point x1 y1 is m equal to y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 m equal to y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 example find the equation of a line having slope 1 by 3 and passing through the point 4 3 solution here m is given as 1 by 3 and the coordinates of the point are x1 equal to 4 and y1 equal to 3 substitute these values in equation m equal to y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 we get 1 by 3 equal to y minus 3 divided by x minus 4 therefore x minus 4 equal to 3 times y minus 3 that is x minus 4 equal to 3y minus 9 that is x minus 3y plus 5 equal to 0 this is the equation of required line two point form equation of a line passing through the two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is y minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 equal to x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 example find the equation of line passing through the points 1 2 2 4 here x1 y1 is 1 2 and x2 y2 is 2 4 substituting the values in equation y minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 
equal to x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1. That is y minus 2 divided by 4 minus 2 equal to x minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. That is y minus 2 divided by 2 equal to x minus 1 by 1. That is y minus 2 equal to 2 times x minus 1. Which is nothing but 2x minus y equal to 0. Double intercept form. Equation of line having x intercept a and y intercept b is x by a plus y by b equal to 1. Example, find the equation of line having x intercept 3 and y intercept 2. Here, a equal to 3 and b equal to 2 is given. Therefore, substitute the value in equation x by a plus y by b equal to 1. We get x by 3 plus y by 2 equal to 1. That is 2x plus 3y equal to 6. The polar coordinate system. We first fix a point O in plane called pole. Then fix an axis usually horizontal ray through the O called a polar axis that is OA. Then we can locate the point P in the plane. If we know the distance OP say R and the angle AOP say Q radians then R is called the radial coordinate or radius R of P and theta is called as angular coordinate or polar coordinate angle of P. Here Q is denoted by theta. Thus, given a point P in the plane, we can represent it by a pair of coordinates R and theta, where R is the directed distance of P from O and theta is angle AOP, measured in radians in anticlockwise direction. We use the term directed distance because R may be negative. Relation between Cartesian and polar coordinate. The Cartesian coordinate xy and polar coordinate r theta are related by the following relations x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta. That is r equal to root of x square plus y square and theta equal to tan inverse y by x. Now we define complex number. The complex number can be defined as z equal to x plus i y where x is real number, y is real number, i is not a real number and value of i is square root of minus 1. If y equal to 0, we say z is purely real number. If x equal to 0 and y not equal to 0, we say z is purely imaginary. Now, the definition of complex number is an order pair of real numbers. That is, z equal to x plus i y can be represented by x y. Two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and imaginary parts are also equal. The complex conjugate of a complex number z equal to x plus i y is denoted by z bar and it is z bar equal to x minus i y. Definition The sum of two complex numbers z1 equal to x1 plus i y1 and z2 equal to x2 plus i y2 is a complex number z1 plus z2 which is x1 plus x2 plus i times y1 plus y2. That means two complex number can be added by adding their real parts and adding their imaginary parts. In terms of order pairs, addition is defined as, sum is defined as x1 y1 plus x2 y2 equal to order pair x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2. A complex number is an expression of the form x plus i y where x and y are real numbers and i equal to root of minus 1 is imaginary unit. x is called as real part, y is called as imaginary part of the complex number. We write x equal to a real part of x y, x plus i y and y equal to imaginary part of x plus i y. Remember that i is a not a real number. Imaginary x plus i y is the real number y and not the number i y. We denote the set of all complex numbers by capital C. So, capital C equal to x plus i y such that x y belongs to R. By convention, we will usually denote the element of C by z. So, 
whenever we will talk the complex number z we will mean z equal to x plus i y for some x y belongs to r in fact z equal to real part of z plus i into imaginary part of z this is usually called algebraic or standard or rectangular representation of the complex number given z equal to x plus r y in c minus z is a complex number minus x plus i times minus y the difference z1 minus z2 of two complex numbers z1 equal to x1 plus i y1 and z2 equal to x2 plus i y2 is defined by z1 minus z2 equal to z1 plus minus z2 that is nothing but x1 minus x2 plus i times y1 minus y2 that means difference of two complex numbers is a complex number whose real part is difference of the real parts of two complex numbers plus i times difference of imaginary parts of the two complex numbers multiplication if z1 equal to x1 plus i y1 and z2 equal to x2 plus i y2 are two complex numbers then multiplication is defined as z1 into z2 equal to x1 x2 minus y1 y2 plus i times x1 y2 plus y1 x2 division it is also called as quotient if z1 equal to x1 plus i y1 and z2 equal to x2 plus i y2 are two complex numbers then division is defined as z1 divided by z2 and it can be obtained by multiplying and divide by the complex conjugate of the second complex number that is z1 by z2 equal to z1 multiplied by z2 conjugate divided by z2 multiplied by z2 conjugate which is nothing but x1 plus i y1 multiplied by x2 minus i y2 divided by x2 plus i y2 multiplied by x2 minus i y2 that is equal to x1 x2 plus y1 y2 plus i times x2 y1 minus x1 y2 divided by x2 square plus y2 square now linear equations an expression of the form ax plus b with ab belongs to r and a non zero is a linear polynomial over r in one variable an equation of the form ax plus b equal to zero where abc belongs to r a non zero is called as linear equation over r a solution of the linear equation ax plus b equal to zero is a complex number alpha for which a alpha plus b equal to zero then alpha is also called as root of the equation ax plus b equal to zero the linear equation ax plus b equal to zero has one and only one solution that is x equal to minus b by a then define quadratic equation an expression of the form ax square plus bx plus c where abc belongs to r a non zero is called as quadratic polynomial over r in one variable x on equating the quadratic polynomial to zero we get quadratic equation over r in standard form that is ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero where a is non zero is called as quadratic equation a solution of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero is a complex number alpha such that a alpha square plus b alpha plus c equal to zero for solution of the quadratic equation we use a quadratic formula we get two solutions of the quadratic equation by the formula quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero where abc belongs to r and a non zero as x equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a by using this formula we shall solve the equation x square minus 5x plus 6 equal to zero here a equal to 1 b equal to minus 5 c equal to 6 If we compare the given equation with standard form, a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero, and substituting these values in the formula, x equal to minus b plus minus root of b square minus four c divided by two a, we get 
x equal to minus of minus 5 plus minus root of minus 5 square minus 4 into 1 into 6 divided by 2 into 1 which are nothing but 2 and 3. 2 polynomials a0 plus a1x plus anx raised to n and b0 plus b1x plus bmx raised to m are called equal if m equal to n and a i equal to b i for all i equal to 1 to 3 up to n. Thus, two polynomials are equal if they have same degree and their corresponding coefficients are equal. Polynomial of degree 3 is called as cubic polynomial. A polynomial of degree 4 is called as quadratic polynomial or biquadratic polynomial. If fx and gx are two polynomials over r, then fx plus minus gx is a polynomial over r and degree of fx plus minus gx is less than or equal to of maximum of degree of fx or degree of gx. fx gx is a polynomial over r and degree of fx into gx is equal to degree of fx plus degree of gx. Let fx be a non-zero polynomial over r and a belong to c is called a root of or zero of the fx then f a equal to zero. In this case we also say that a is solution or a root of the equation fx equal to 0. The set of a solution of the equation is called a solution set theorem, division algorithm theorem. Given a polynomial fx and gx over r with gx not equal to 0, there exist unique polynomial qx and rx over r such that fx equal to gx into qx plus rx and degree of rx is less than equal to degree of gx. Next theorem. If a polynomial equation over R has a complex root, they occur in conjugate powers. That means complex root of a polynomial always occurs in conjugate, conjugate pairs. Thank you. For more details, see YouTube channel issued in Competitive Mathematics and subscribe the channel. Thank you again and have a nice day.